Well, you all have been asking about it, and here it is. We've got an update for you on the abandoned church, and I have a feeling it's an update that a lot of you guys are not going to like. Now we haven't covered anything about the abandoned church on the channel for quite some time, so for those of you that haven't seen anything about this project before, let's do a little recap here. So in the summer of 2019, my wife and I came across this beautiful building for sale. At that point in time, we didn't have a ton on our plate. I was working full time as an operator doing uh, heavy highway construction. So we thought that this uh, building was in a good location and it wasn't too far from home. We thought it would be a great place to renovate into four apartment units and we could probably generate a good little bit of extra income every month. Now, I am not a professional carpenter, nor mason, nor just about anything but I've done enough of it to get by and I can do stuff for myself, although I might not be the fastest or the, the best at it, but you know, it's a fun way for me to hone my skills and hopefully make some cashola in the process. Now, if you don't remember or you didn't see it, the whole playlist to this whole series, there's a link to the playlist down in the description here, but when we bought this building, it was slap full of junk. You couldn't hardly walk through this room, let alone the upstairs. The upstairs was jam packed with not only church pews, but the previous owner's contents that they had probably spent years amassing in this building. So we had quite a bit of work ahead of us just to get the building cleared out and to where we could really see all the issues with the building. Now, once we got the building cleared out and could see clearly all the problems, well, then we had a little bit bigger project on our hands than I think we had bargained for at first, but no fear, I, uh, I plowed ahead. So before I bought the place, I knew that this wall right here was a big problem. If you go back to the first videos on this building, this section of wall from here over to the corner there was a busted concrete block, just like the rest of the wall is, um, only that part's not busted. So this whole section here was completely blown out and uh, pushing in pretty terribly. I'll bet you... Right, there's, there's a window cut out right there. It's supposed to be there, but I never got around to cutting it back out. But anyways, at that window, I bet you the wall was pushed in over two and a half feet. So there was really no structural support from the wall in that area. So I came in and I supported the floor above me uh, and it is a brick veneer building. So there's no real good way to support the brick outside. Um, as I try to rebuild a wall underneath of it. So I did the best I could and formed it up and poured it solid concrete with a big rebar grid in there and uh, had to do it in sections because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to support the whole building. And if I took it all out at once, I was afraid the building might come down. So we got these two sections and they're all rebarred together. Uh, and the same, there's another window that this plywood is covering up. You can see there's a little bit opening at the top there, but that that wall is a continuous pour all the way over to here and that is all tied together now and despite what some of the internet uh, keyboard experts might tell you i'm 99.9 percent .9 sure that that is the strongest part of this building now so even though the biggest part of the foundation issue was fixed we still have this wall over here. Now from just about the corner, maybe a few feet shy of the corner, clear down the length of the building past those steps in there, 
you can see that little teeny slice of window up there that is uh, peeking out by the stairs. Right about there is where this wall is also sheared off and pushed inward a couple inches. Now I have had some of those wall anchoring people come in and evaluate it and they told me that, you know, it's probably not going to go anywhere now because I excavated the whole outside of it and took all the pressure off the wall, which caused it to heave in the first place. So with the building stabilized, I had quite a bit of work ahead of me yet to get the space converted into a livable space. Very damp down here. Um, so I excavated that whole side of the building. There was an addition over there with some toilets in it. We demoed all that stuff, put it back to the original size footprint of the building. And then we put a good coat of tar on the outside of the building and put in a good French drain the whole way along there. And I'll tell you what, this side of the building where I put the French drain does not get one drop of water even in the heaviest of rains now. So I did a good job on that. I had the best of intentions of getting back down here and doing this side to keep it nice and high and dry, but uh, that never materialized. Somewhere in the midst of all this happenings here at the church, we had this little thing called a pandemic happen. That didn't affect what I was doing down here, but it did affect the price of everything, as you, I'm sure, are well aware of. The cost of two by fours skyrocketed, just about every building material for that matter, went through the roof. So, the cost of putting four apartment units in this building um, probably more than quadrupled in price, which made it prohibitively expensive to do what we were planning on doing. So, as you guys are well aware, the project kind of disappeared from the channel for a while and uh, didn't do much with it. Now, we were hoping that the cost of building materials was going to go back down substantially and it seemed like they were on that trend for a while. And then uh, if you've been to Home Depot lately or something, you'll know that the prices are climbing way high back up there. So like I said, from the very beginning, we bought the building with the intention of making money on it. All right, this was not a labor of love so much as a money-making proposition. Now it was gonna be a really cool project and I really do wish that we could have gotten it there, but the fact is it's just not gonna be the profitable venture with the cost of materials where they are. Also, the area that this building is located in is not a high-end neighborhood, okay? It's a middle-class working neighborhood, which there's nothing wrong with that, but the simple fact is you can't charge a fortune for rent here, and it would take a long, long time to pay off a loan that we would have to take out to do what we wanted to do here. So as I'm sure a lot of you also know, the price of the homes is right up there and the availability is down. So hot housing market, which means that it was a good time to try to sell this thing and still make some money on this venture. When me and my wife bought the building, it was this close to going up for a sheriff sale and selling for back taxes. Luckily, I was able to swing in at the last moment and save that from happening. So the very first thing we did, we came in, we cleaned out as much as we could. We sold off church pews and any other antiques and other odds and ends that were stored in here. And we believe that the guy that we bought this building from, he was passed away. We bought it from his wife. We believe that he was a yard sale kind of fellow that would go to all these flea markets and buy and sell and swap and trade and stored all of that inventory in this building. So it was slap full of good flea market material. So fast forward two years and a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears. We have a building with a stabilized foundation, mostly emptied out. I cleaned up the perimeter too. There was, there was a bunch of nasty dead trees all around here and uh, I did a good bit of work around the building to kind of make it a little more presentable. So when we listed it, we listed it for $50,000. We were thinking, meh, you can always come down, you can't usually go up. Probably spent about three or 4,000 at the very most in materials um, to do the French drain and fix the foundation wall. Of course, that doesn't account for my time I did have quite a bit of time in doing all the work around here. 
Uh, my wife helped with what she could, but the reality is that she doesn't know how to do a lot of the stuff, so that fell to me. So three days after listing the building, for, we got an offer on it for Sold! Didn't take us long to think about that one. We took the offer. So, I don't, I don't know exactly who is purchasing the building. I don't know if they know about the whole YouTube series. It was disclosed in the paperwork, but who really reads that stuff anyways? Now, I was told it was somebody local. I don't know their intentions exactly with the property. But when we have our closing here in the next few days, I'm gonna talk to them and perhaps, if you guys all cross your fingers, perhaps maybe the new owner will be kind enough to let us come back through here once they've got done doing whatever it is they're gonna do here. And they'll allow us to look around and see what could have been had I had the uh, cashola to pony out for this project. Now, as I said at the very beginning there, I know that this is an update that is gonna upset a lot of you and I am sorry about that, but we have to stick to our goals. This isn't something I was just doing for fun. This was something that we set out to make money on and luckily the market is such that we are able to still make money on this. Would I have loved to have seen this converted into four apartments and been a nice little building? Absolutely, I think it will still work out great for somebody. There is profit to be made long term. However, to make it an affordable venture, I would have to do a lot of the work myself. Now, as you guys love to remind me oh so often, I've got a lot on my plate. I spread myself pretty thin. So the decision to sell this place was just the one that made the most sense. I've got my own shop that we're building. Me and my wife would like to build a house sometime in the very near future. And that all takes a lot of my time as well as a lot of money, as you guys all know. So with the building under contract and the closing set for just a few days away, I figure it's a good time to give you guys one last little walkthrough of the abandoned church. There are a few more odds and ends that I'm going to snag out of here before we leave. But most of this stuff that you guys see is going to be left in here. I just don't have the time and space to dedicate to try to piecemeal all this stuff out and make $50 on all the work. Everybody likes that wooden oven back there, the wood fired oven, but the reality is that it's broken and it weighs about 500 pounds and nobody wants to move the thing or pay more than $100 for it. So for that, it can sit there and it can be the next owner's problem. I just realized I have some plywood left here. I should take that. That stuff's awful pricey these days. Sounds like the neighbors are cutting the grass. The roof leaks right here in this spot. These stairs lead down to the baptismal font, or what used to be a baptismal font. That's where I was just pointing at that plywood. So you'd walk down one side, come out on the other here. I don't know that I've ever done a full tour here. A little closet. There's two staircases that go down to the basement here. The one great thing about this building is that it has a really high ceiling in the basement. There's a church two doors down from here. 
and it's set up pretty much the same way but their basement has much lower ceilings and the funny thing was that right after we bought this church the other one went up for sale and it's it's in much 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 better shape but there is plenty of room down here and upstairs the footprint is the same on the first and second stories we were going to put two units up top and two units down below here I guess this used to be a kitchen kind of area when they would have Sunday dinners or fundraising events something like that in the building all I have is the flashlight on my phone here for this room it's pretty dark but yeah nothing spectacular guys so once again I know that this is an update that a lot of you aren't gonna want to receive but I hope you can understand where we're coming from and why we're doing what we're doing the good news for you guys is that it's just one more thing off of my plate that I'm kind of got thrown around in the back of my head worrying about this will give me at least a little bit more mental clarity, I hope, to be able to dedicate better time and focus towards all the other projects that you guys also enjoy. So for one last time from the abandoned church here, I wanna thank you guys for watching and following along, and I will see you on the next project. Catch you later.